right, so now we're going to be talking about Ethereum, but before we do so, please make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel where we're constantly bringing you uh, videos about some of the hottest cryptocurrencies on the market. Uh, basically, these uh, technical analysis article videos, I mean, are coming out on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. So yeah, make sure to subscribe, uh, hit the notification button so you can, you know, be alert about all the TAs that we're bringing you. Also, you can follow me at Ali underscore charts, and you can follow my co-host Akash at Mac and Go with a zero at the end, and you can also follow Jonathan with just analysis one. Now, when we when we talk about uh, Ethereum, right, one of the of the main things that we need to notice is that the the network is about to become deflationary. That means that the the amount of tokens that are being pulled out. Uh, uh, out of circulation are actually less than the amount of tokens that are basically put into circulation, you know? So when we look at the at the at all the, the exchanges reserves of, of Ethereum, what we can see is a significant downtrend that has occurred ever since basically, you know, the, the, the Ethereum 2.0 smart contracts were launched, right? As of right now, uh, roughly 18.6 million Ethereum are, are sitting on exchanges, which, uh, and this metric is continuously climbing, right? Um, you also need to take into consideration that thus far, uh, roughly 8 million uh, Ethereum have, have, have been locked in the Ethereum 2.0, uh, you know, smart contracts. Um, and uh, basically that's that's worth roughly $27 billion, you know? And now when you also take into consideration that 510,000 Ethereum have been burned uh, with the launch of the recent London hard fork, which is roughly $1.8 billion. I mean, that's a, that's basically a lot of Ethereum tokens that have been put into circ out of circulation. So. Even though Ethereum seems to be lacking in terms of price action compared to, to what Bitcoin has been doing lately, I do believe that it's just a matter of time before this uh, cryptocurrency, you know, explodes towards new all-time highs. Of course, if you're trading this crypto in the derivatives market, you might be getting caught with the noise, right? And all the fluctuations, right? And uh, you could potentially get wrecked. But if you're actually accumulating Ethereum for the long term, I do believe that this uh, cryptocurrency has some serious upside potential. Um, as of right now, I mean, we, we, we have been seeing that the, the activity on the network uh, was actually declining ever since Ethereum topped around 4,400 bucks uh, back in, in, in May. But we did see a significant increase in network activity uh, over the last few days, right? I mean, uh, Ethereum literally saw uh, 140,000 new addresses being created on the network. Uh, on October 6th, and since then, although this, uh, this metric has declined a little bit, it does seem that it continues to, to, to move up. Right? Uh, now, when we look at the, at, at the price action of Ethereum, what are the, the key levels of support and resistance, right? What, what I continuously say is that as long as Ethereum stays above $3,200, I mean, there is nothing that can prevent it from literally just skyrocketing towards new all-time highs, right? I mean, one of my first targets is basically 5,000, given the, the, you know, the level of psychology that this has on people's mind. But it, it, is, it is possible that it actually does a 100% increase towards $6,000. So as long as $3,200 holds, I don't see why Ethereum could, could could retrace further than this, you know? I mean, we, we do see that, that over the past few days, uh, a lot of people have bought uh, Ethereum basically at an average price of $3,500, right? Roughly 1.58 million addresses bought uh, 3.46 million Ethereum at this price point. So, you know, if, if Ethereum shows any signs of, of weakness, it, it is very possible that these traders will try to, you know, to sell their holdings, right? Because, you know, they're getting caught up with the, with the market sentiment and that could push Ethereum towards $3,200. But I do believe that this uh, demand zone will, will hold and, um, you know, Ethereum will continue marching forward, right? Uh, basically towards $5,000, $6,000. But, but yeah, we, we have also seen that, right? I mean, since, since basically September, the number of addresses 
with uh, with 10,000 to 100,000 Ethereum in their wallets, right? Increase their positions from basically 29.81 million Ethereum. That's what they were holding back in, in late September. Uh, and basically they peaked towards, uh, yeah, 31 million Ethereum, right, in, the, in their holdings. So, um, so that's basically 2 million Ethereum that were bought during that time. But over the past few days, right, we have seen a, a, a significant decrease in the in the holdings of, of these uh, of these wells right i mean they have roughly uh you know kind of like sold uh, around 500,000 ethereum which of course it has put some some selling pressure to it and that's why it has had a, a difficult time trying to break out of that $3,600 resistance level that we see from a technical perspective but once again i mean the 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 on-chain dynamics and the, the the amount of supply of, of, of this token that is being put out of circulation that is being burned and basically the, the decreasing amount of tokens on, on, on exchanges just points to a direction and that's just upwards. So once again, as long as $3,200 continues to hold, I believe that Ethereum could, could potentially, you know, rise towards new all-time highs and actually it may even outperform Bitcoin just because of, of how much of how many tokens have been put out of circulation but uh but yeah that's that's basically my take on on ethereum i'm leaning bullish but uh i don't know what, what you're seeing jonathan sure i'll get my screen here so um looking at the daily ichimoku chart i mean it's uh it's these kinds of trade conditions are always a little uh, confusing when you look at them day to day, you kind of get caught up in the tunnel vision because, um, you know, ever since the breakdown in um, in May, the RSI had shifted into bear market conditions, was almost out of it until it fell back down below again. And, you know, it's the RSI has really struggled to even, you know, stay at 60. And now it's just recently dipped below the first overbought condition in a bear market at 55. And then just today it's dipping below it again. Um, I mean, really you're just seeing like what, what happens inside the cloud. This is the most miserable place to be participating in any market. When any instruments inside the cloud, it's where everything bad exists. COVID-19 was probably created inside of here. Stupid sports like cross country are invented in this kind of thing. <laughs> just basically giving you examples of how horrible the cloud is. Um, but it, it it looks bearish still to me uh despite the this rise here the correction looks uh fairly uh soon the, the only thing is is that the downside may be limited to 3k um if the composite index continues at this dramatic slope and it creates uh, a lower low equals the lower it creates a lower low then um what's here on September 21st and Ethereum stays above that low, that's hidden bullish divergence and that will convert it into a full-blown uh, bull market. But specifically, I don't think it can go into full-blown bull market until that lagging span or the Chiku span has a close um, at 3,600. That's what we need, 3,625. 3, that's what it needs to close at for it to go full bull mode. But from a point and figure perspective, um, on the $25 three box reversal chart, one of the strongest bearish entry setups is, is developing. There's a triple bottom, and then you have a double bottom forming right after that. Um, you know, this, you know, market makers look at the sell entries then at 3375, and the target zone on the profit taking is at 3075. So that's that's where that low is at. That's kind of matches in with what I see in the Ichimoku analysis at uh, that 3K zone being the uh, pri near term primary support structure. But uh, on the long side of it, too, on the uh, this is this is why I hate instruments that are inside the cloud, because you get so many you have you have so many good reasons to have a strong bias on either side of the market. It makes it hard to pick one that has the most strength attached to it. But on the $50 three box reversal chart, um, we recently broke above the dominant downtrend angle. And in point and figure charting, we're always in a bull market or bear market. They can switch quite frequently, but we were in a bear market and we broke out above it. We had our first pullback since breaking below that. And 
Uh, the first pullback is usually a sign of strength, and we've already seen the first reversal column of X's show up. So there'll be a double top uh, at, if it returns to 36.50, and then at 37 even, the projected target off of that vertical level using the vertical uh, profit target method and point figure analysis as at 5,200. That's the initial target zone. So on the long side of it, it's, it doesn't have, doesn't have far to go to go into full on bull mode. Um, at the present value area, it's, it's much easier for it to go higher than it is to go lower, but, but uh, there's a lot more, uh, you know, oscillator support pointing to some downside movement as well. That's uh, that's interesting. So so yeah, I mean, if if there were to to come a, a sell off per se, right, or a spike in profit taking, um, as as we have been seeing with the with the number of wells, you know, from a, from a on chain perspective that have basically offloaded roughly. 500,000 Ethereum over the past few days. Uh, do you believe that the downside will be capped at around 3,000, right? I think it would be difficult price action wise, volume profile wise, and no matter which way you look at it, I think it. I think you'd have a hard time pushing it below 3K. I mean, I mean these cryptocurrencies, they can do wild and crazy things. You could have a flash crash down there and you know below that in no time, but... You know, you know, all other things remaining equal as they currently are. Uh, 3K is the nearest term strong level of support. Okay, that's that's great to know. And then, of course, right, if, if it breaks above um, 3,625, then that's when you could, I mean, you you believe that the, that the option will basically resume and one of the first targets for you sits around... Uh, 5,200. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. What What about you, Akash? Are you Are you seeing anything different from a lower time perspective? I think I'm leaning a little. Uh, okay, not me, but I think Ethereum showing a lot more strength than a lot of altcoins are showing, because uh, a lot of altcoins are really like getting wrecked right now. Uh, but Ethereum seems to be holding up between these two levels, which is uh, thirty three thousand eight hundred eighty seven and uh, thirty six thousand twenty. Uh, and it's been doing this since October 3rd uh, and Bitcoin's rallied roughly 22% uh, since October 3rd. So I think uh, relatively speaking, it is showing strength as long as it continues to hold above this level here, which is a uh, same 33,000. Uh, I think there is a chance that Ethereum uh, can uh, get into an upswing, uh, probably collect liquidity resting above these highs here, which is uh, I want to see it uh, retest the 4,000 level, psychological level, right? Uh, but apart from that, if this level fails, 33,087, I think 32,000 is like the best level uh, we can uh, hope for it to uh, bounce off of. Uh, but this, uh, but generally speaking, this whole area, 3,200 to 2,700 is uh, a good support. And I think we need to hold above uh, 3,000 psychological level. Uh, but that is if we lose 3200 and I don't see it losing 3200 like unless we see a full blown uh, downturn in BTC which goes up to like probably 50k so if BTC bounces off 53, 52 uh, I think 3200 should hold uh, but uh, yeah that, that's that's what I'm looking at for ETH and another thing that I just wanted to show out is uh, I just overlaid uh, the 2015 cycle to 2017 top uh, and uh, from the bottom uh, to Ethereum's bottom, which took place probably in December 2018, when a lot of, yeah, a lot of uh, Bitcoin bottom out here. All right, so if you look at it, the cycle is like extremely similar. The initial run up and then uh, the long period of consolidation, the first cycle and extremely long period of consolidation 2015 cycle. And right now at the stop and kind of like a double top formation and this minor bump that we see here is what we're seeing here right now. And so if the cycle continues to hold for the last leg up, then I think, uh, it, 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 it really doesn't matter, right? Uh, we could probably go down to 3K over here. Uh, it's not really visible well here, but I think 3K is where we'll bounce off of and then uh, go based on this target, right? It's showing uh, roughly 14,000. But uh, the last leg of the cycle honestly tends to overextend. So anywhere between 15 to 20K ETH seems uh, <clears throat> good for me. 
Yeah, 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 definitely. So, so I mean, based on the on the network dynamics, uh, I believe that the downside potential for this uh, digital asset is uh, capped. Is capped yeah. uh, from a, from an on chain perspective, it seems to be capped around three thousand two hundred dollars. From a technical perspective, it seems capped at three thousand dollars. So, as of right now, Ethereum is currently sitting at. Three thousand four hundred and forty-five, right? So, if you were to purchase Ethereum at the current price price levels and you were to dip uh, towards three thousand dollars, I mean, the the best thing that you could do for your portfolio is basically just buy more, because uh, with the as the network becomes deflationary uh, and as more uh, tokens get out of circulation, uh, what you basically could have is a potential supply shock where basically Ethereum goes bananas at a certain point and there's, there's literally no point of return, right? Um, you know, as from a kind of like a conservative price point, I do believe that 5,000, uh, 5,000, 5,200, as Jonathan said, could be a, a potential first target, right? Uh, and from that point on, we could get a brief correction towards the the, I mean, the recent all-time high of probably 4,400 or maybe like 4,500 before basically it marched forward, right? Uh, Akashi, if you go back to the to the fractal that you have that you have shown, you can see in there that at five at 5,200 there is a brief correction, right? Yeah. Um, so basically, on on that peak right there, no, 5,000 5,200, right? So exactly, you see right there. So basically, yeah, around the, the end of 2022, yeah, there seems to be also the, this fact that points to a, to a, you know, a, a, a local top at around 5,200 before a brief correction towards, yeah, something like 4,500, 4,800 before it just continues going up, right? So, so yeah, I mean, all, all seems I Seems like a really good, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, continue. Uh, uh, no, so, yeah, seems like a really good uh, trade-off. Like, uh, if you look at risk risk reward ratios right now, I think if you if it goes to uh, three thousand, right, and if you hold for like six months, mm -hmm. hopefully, uh, we reach like fifteen k. It's like an easy five x of your portfolio. That is that is that is correct. So so yeah, uh, you know, from a, from a long term perspective, I do believe that that Ethereum has the potential to continue going up. But of course, right, there is always going to be some volatility along the way. Uh, if you're trading, uh, you know, uh, petrol contracts and you're basically a little bit over leveraged, uh, maybe this uh, technical analysis may not work for you. But if you're more of a long term investor who's uh, trading on the spots markets, right, and is potentially looking for, for some cryptocurrency to buy at the moment, Ethereum seems to be presenting a, a really bullish potential. So, um, so yeah, you know, if, if, if you want to continue, uh, you know, listening to what we have to offer about Ethereum and all the other cryptocurrencies, just make sure to subscribe to your YouTube channel and also follow us on Twitter since we're constantly bringing you some quick uh, DA pieces in there. So. Mm -hmm.